The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. We are brought to you by CBDMD and their superior CBD oil products. I use them every day. I'm a huge fan of CBDMD's products. I use all their stuff. I use their muscle bombs. I use their oils. And I use their gummies. I love their gummies because CBDMD's gummies are delicious. They taste like candy, but they're actually good for you. They provide a fruit-flavored, easy-to-use way to get your daily serving of CBD, while CBDMD's sour gummies pack the same superior CBD you know and love into mouth-puckering, pre-measured pieces. And both the classic and the sour gummies are vegan, gluten-free, and feature four delicious flavors, orange, strawberry, raspberry, and tropical. They have a host of amazing CBD products at CBDMD. And to make it even easier for you to treat yourself, they're offering all JRE listeners 25% off your next order when you use the promo code ROGAN at checkout. So once again, that's CBDMD.com. Use the promo code ROGAN for 25% off your purchase of high-quality CBD oil products from CBDMD. We are brought to you by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an award-winning home security system. So, you know, it's engineered with the latest technology you want to keep your family safe. But what really sets Simply Safe apart is its people. Highly trained security experts who are always there for you when you need them most. These are people who truly care about keeping you safe. When an alarm goes off, a person who cares is there for you with a phone call to make sure you're okay. When an emergency happens, a person who cares is there for you by getting fire and police response to your front door right away. Even if you just have a bomb and setting up your system, a person who cares is there for you with a friendly chat and a quick resolution. The bottom line is, when you need the most, Simply Safe is there 24 7 with people who care and experts trained to not only keep you safe, but to make sure. It's one of the many reasons why U.S. News recently called Simply Safe the best home security system of 2021. To learn more about how Simply Safe can help protect you and your family, visit simplysafecom Rogan today to customize your system and get a free security camera. You also get a 60-day risk-free trial. That's simplysafecom Rogan. We are brought to you by ButcherBox. ButcherBox makes it easy to get high quality, mainly raised meat you can trust. They deliver 100% grass fed, grass finished beef, free range organic chicken, heritage breed pork, and wild caught seafood directly to your door. And they have unbeatable value. The average cost is less than $6 a meal. Tremendous flexibility for box options and delivery frequencies that will fit your needs. You can cancel at all times with no penalty. Great tasting meat that you can feel good about delivered right to your doorstep with free shipping. Butcher Box does it right. They partner with people who believe in doing better, honoring nature and animals and the land, and they work to give cattle room to graze, 100% grass-fed and free to roam on pastures. They raise hogs on pasture or in coop barns, free to do what hogs do. They ensure the chickens have outdoor access, no cages, no crates, or crowding, and they uphold strict fishing and handling practices when it comes to wild-caught, sustainably harvested seafood. I love them and I love their offer. Butcher Box is offering new members free lobster tails and ribeye steaks in your first box so you can celebrate summer to the fullest. This limited time offer will be available for new members when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash Rogan. That's two five ounce lobster tails and two 10 ounce ribeye steaks all for free in your first box at butcherbox.com slash Rogan. We are brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Recent data shows that out of all the female-owned businesses, it is estimated that one in three is owned by a mom. 
Well, you ever wonder how those amazing moms and dads find time to hire for their businesses while juggling their families? They do it with ZipRecruiter. And right now, you can try it for free. Only at ZipRecruiter.com slash Rogan. CEO and founder Talia Goldstein is one such mompreneur. Besides being a mother of two, her personalized matchmaking company, Three Day Rule, is constantly growing and she needs to hire several matchmakers a month. So she uses ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful technology helps her find people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply. Employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash This special is only good at ZipRecruiter.com slash R-O-G-A-N. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Adam Curry. You are the pod There can be only one. Joe Rogan, certified being as the pod father. My life has been so enriched since March of uh, 2020. You have given me uh, an inc- just an incredible new lease on professional life. It's That's been awesome. Fantastic. Well, I didn't have to recertify you. Everybody knows you. You're the original. Yeah. Without you, there 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 are no podcasts. But you, you know, there are a lot of the. Uh, podcast listeners who are on the scene now and they're too young to even this is 18 years ago when the podcast had slurped for us. 18 so years crazy. ago. So they know it maybe from Serial 2016 or so. We are 11 years this is this show's in the neighborhood's pretty close to 11 years old. It's like 10 and a half years old. But you like 18 years. That's yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and the way it's evolved is pretty interesting. It is interesting, right? It's like W- the way it's evolving on YouTube is very bizarre. Like, because there's folks that um, up until fairly recently only did their show on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And now I think some of those folks are starting to branch out and they're doing them on other platforms as well. Well, but you know why? With the censorship. Of course. Yeah, of course. It's, it's kind of spooky. And, you yeah. know, people think that, well, you have to do something to combat misinformation and... Like, you know, um, uh, we were talking the other day about Yuval uh, Noah Harari, the, the guy, the author who wrote *Sapiens*. Mm-hmm. He um, had a, a segment on his uh, Instagram where he's talking about um, misinformation on uh, the internet and about how, when books first came out, the the most popular books weren't books on Galileo. They no, it was books. gossip, gossip crap. Well, he was saying that it was about witches. <laughs> <laughs> how to spot witches right right and, right and then countless people were killed because people were convinced that these how to spot witches books were good mm-hmm. and so they were going around trying to spot witches and kill them and so this was at the invention of the printing press this was like one of the first early uses of it. i had not heard that but when he said it it was like bing oh, of course have you seen the great uh, the Cath- Catherine the great uh, series no. um, so, and i think a lot of it may actually be stored in two other comedy like you know she apparently had sex with her horse and there's some historical evidence of that yeah she supposedly <laughs> did right <laughs> yeah, like, did she die having sex with the horse did the horse fall on her or something I, you know that's possible there's another series coming out so it hasn't happened yet and, you know, series two is coming did i spoil it <laughs> but um she, you know according to to, this, to the netflix series she brought the printing press uh into the country and then uh, they started printing gossip stuff which people like a lot more than anything else. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, and yeah, you know, I think that still holds true. Oh, so for sure, absolutely. Now, do you consider YouTube? You don't consider a podcast, do you? I mean, it's kind of a podcast. It's the same thing, right? I mean, this podcast for the longest time was on YouTube, and it's still on YouTube in clip mm-hmm. form. Mm-hmm. But I mean, what is the difference between like what we do and you know maybe what uh, like Tim Pool? Does he have what? Sorry. What? History.com says this is. This is all misinformation. People like talking shit about her. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> they got printed. <laughs> and, and, they and, with it. and and what uh, what uh, what source is telling me I'm full of shit? History.com. Oh well, of course. Yeah. No, 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 with no, a name no, like no. History.com. I didn't, you're not full of shit. I'm full of shit because I said that she died fucking <laughs> like a horse. horse. <laughs> that was 
<laughs> That's just people talking yeah, trash about like her. The vilified her. Oh, oh well, 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 there it is. Yeah. There's, there's the words on the screen. It must be true. She yeah. had become a vilified representative of the. How do you say that word? Ancien, ancien. A n c i e n. Oh, maybe. Yeah. It, so that kind of discredits the uh, authenticity and the. <laughs> Unless that's a word. <laughs> maybe. Ancient is a word, like a name. Yeah. yeah. The same kind of pornographic libels that have been used against Marie Antoinette ah. were all ready to be deployed against her. Revolutionary press has happily poured out the same kind of polemic prose that depicted Catherine as prey to her voracious sexual appetite. Woo! British press is. You know what? I had heard that that was the same with. Um, Someone sent me um, uh, something about Elizabeth Bathory. Do you know who she was? No. Elizabeth Bathory was, uh, she was supposedly this very evil woman who murdered a lot of young women. Uh, and she was a royal. And um, that she, yeah. See, see, it says serial killer, but what this guy said to me, because apparently, well, the, the story was that she would find these young peasant women and murder them. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would bathe in their blood in an attempt to try to regain her youth. And to get the adrenochrome. Yeah, something like right. that. Right. So they found out that she had done this, and then because she was a royal, she wasn't killed. She was just sort of locked in a tower for the rest of her life. And she died in her house. Hmm. But someone sent me a link to a story, because we were talking about it on the podcast. I forget which friend of mine sent it to me where it was disputing that and saying that she was framed thus to steal her land because uh, she was a woman and this woman owned large swaths of land as a royal and they wanted to take over her land and the way they could take over her land was to say that she was a murderer that she's been murdering young peasants and they framed her with this crime. The older I get, the more I realize how much history that I've learned or have read is could likely be completely full of shit. There could be this always multiple ways of viewing a situation historically. Um, I think it's kind of in our brain the idea yeah. that you know you can see something, I can see the same thing, and we interpret that differently. And I think that's truth. And you think that's you know, something else is truth for sure. So and, and whoever writes the history literally writes the history. Yeah. You know, so that you can look at it how, after World War II. You know, who, we got to write the history. It's a little more complex, all the things that happened in Europe and with Russia. And, yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of ways of looking at it. Uh, so, I, I mean, think know. about the, okay, let's let's think about like the history of, first of all, before, I want to get into the history of Julian Assange, but is that is that true? I about Elizabeth Bathory? Digging through the Wikipedia honor, it's around the time of like Hungary, Transylvania, so it sounds like vampire time period. Uh, she's been credited with somewhere in the range of 650 deaths. There was a lot of witnesses in the trial, but there was a theory about what you're saying and then someone's trying to counter it and that's what I was reading for right now. Mm. So. Yeah, I don't know if this guy, what, what the guy sent me, the, the other thing is people love, even if a story's true, people love stories that point that it might not be true. That's even more exciting than the... It's human yeah. nature. It's, like, like, oh, you think that's a true story, but I know the true, true this, story. This is what fuels Twitter yeah. and most of social <laughs> media. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Um, By the way, I've noticed... That I was just thinking this morning, Twitter is actually incredibly racist. Twitter the machine. How so? They're, they're, um, so I'm, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. So I get Bitcoin Twitter. I get it in my feed. But, you know, I, uh, I do a show with Mo, Mo Fax. Um, I follow different black Americans. Uh, but I don't get black Twitter. It doesn't give me all the stuff. I mean, I get all the Bitcoin stuff just by following a few people. I don't get it. And I never see anything. I never see different languages. I never see anything from Asia. So it's making decisions there that I think are inherently bigoted. But don't you have to follow people to get yeah, but if feed? I feed? I know. So I follow a couple people that I would consider in black Twitter, and I just don't get the stuff in my feed. And from them, a little bit. Hmm. But they're not really giving me the full fire hose. It's like I, no matter what I try to do to train the algo, it's I very do. difficult. I Jeez. get a pretty decent feed of it. I see it. I follow you, so how come I don't get I don't, any of it? I don't retweet, retweet stuff and do like I'm, oh. not, I'm just looking sort oh, of. Okay. I don't really actively participate. I don't want to part add right. it to the algorithm, kind of. That's almost why. But yeah, well, that's the that's the yeah. game. It's like yeah. I want to add to the algorithm to find out you know some stuff. But I just don't yeah. get it. I, it won't come to me. Twitter is a problem. <laughs> it's just. It's to put a, it lightly. A it's great in many ways. Mm -hmm. There's many good things about it. It's a great way to get information. It's a great way to find out about, you know, revolutions that are happening all, all around the world and disasters and all kinds of other things. 
but it's also a very poor way to communicate. And when you're trying to get out complex, nuanced thoughts in 240 characters or 280 characters, whatever it is, it's just not a, an effective way to do that. It, it's Maybe it's a good writing exercise. It's good for comics who just want to like tweet out a quick one-line or a joke. And would-be comics, yeah. which apparently everybody is. Well, there's some pretty that. funny people. Right, but a lot that. of it is, I'm, I'm going to see if I can say something funny. Yes. Yeah, there's some yeah. funny people yeah. that you just don't happen to be professional comedians, but they're yeah. very smart and very funny. And it works for them. But it's just, as a method of communication, it's just, it's so, it's so much poorer, so much shittier than this, than talking. Which is why even the New York Times had to admit you are too big to cancel. This <laughs> oh, I didn't read that. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my a goodness. Weird title, but... Of course it is a weird title, but, but that just shows you. Because it all comes from the same places. All the stuff is heated up everywhere mm. on Twitter, Facebook to some degree. But Twitter, I think, really is, the, is where it all stems from. And, you know, you've got blue checks who are journalists. And it's just, it's a very... Cesspool type thing. Very cesspool. Yeah. I wonder if anybody's done a uh, pie chart of like negative to positive or a graph of negative to positive tweets. Like tweets that are in, uh, that are arguments versus tweets that are like positive and uplifting. Twitter has all that. They know exactly what's going on. Uh, well, I bet it would be overwhelmingly negative. I bet it's more in the neighborhood of like 60%. Except they would see that as sticky. Sticky. They wouldn't say that's negative shit. They'd say that's sticky. Why would they say it's sticky? Because it's p people stay on their platform. They're oh, sticky on the platform. I see. We can I see. we can do more yeah. with them. Like the algorithms. Yeah. Well, it, but as lo the longer you're on the platform, the more money they make. Yeah. I don't know where the censorship is going. You know, the censorship disturbs the shit out of me because there was political censorship that was very clear and very. They made a decision during the uh, election to not release any of the Hunter Biden stuff. So mm -hmm. they censored the New York Post, mm -hmm. which is really crazy because the New York Post is an enormous newspaper. It's been around for how many years? Hundreds, right? Uh, at, at least, at least 80, 80, yeah. yeah. Maybe 100. I yeah. think it's more than 100 years yeah. old. I think, maybe I don't uh, uh, It's old. It's been around how longer, long than, longer than 200? the 200? Holy crap. 200 years mm -hmm. old. Okay, so it's been around forever, and it was a real story. And they decided that real story could cost Joe Biden the election. They wanted Joe Biden to win the election. So they decided they will not air that story. Right. And so if you put that story in your tweets, they deleted it. If you put it on Facebook, they deleted it. They made a, a mass censorship decision that would favor the Democratic Party, which is really weird. It's real weird because it's, why, it's why, not... Why do you see it as weird if you know that people are running these companies, and I'm not talking about Jack Dorsey, but there's a board, there's, you know, there's a lot of money involved, and, uh, you know, there's antitrust that's government involved with them trying to fuck with them, so there's this give and take, what oh, okay. there's, a, there's a lot of things, you know, Silicon that's Valley has spent, outside of pharma probably, the most money on lobbying in D.C., um, and I think there's also a little bit of grandiose right there, you know, it's like, uh, the fucking Twitter, mm -hmm. we'll do what we think is right, and... That's what all of this canceling is, or censorship is, but that's not right. You can't say that it came from a lab. That's not right, because here are the people who said it's, it's, it's um, a technocrats. Yeah. It's a technocratic society, and it's, it's coming from Silicon Valley all over government, everywhere, really. Yeah, it's just so, it was so obvious. That's what was disturbing, because it was such, it was like trying to steal something in broad daylight. And everyone's like, hey, are you just stealing? Are you just mm -hmm. stealing from the store? Maybe that's not the best example. But you're doing something that well, there's no good argument for censorship. Right. It's, it's never been a good thing. Well, even worse than that, today, as long as it's under $950, you can go into a right. Walmart and steal all you want. So there's some, some lessons here. Well, you see what's happening in San Francisco. They're being forced to close down all stores. Of them, all the Walgreens yeah. are closing, yeah. Which is yeah. just so insane that these fucking politicians <laughs> think that that's a viable strategy. For They think that somehow or not. Like, here's the, 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 they were thinking, listen, we're putting people in jail that just want to, you know, feed themselves or something. Like, let's not put them in jail. But what you don't understand is by saying that and publicizing it, you're literally encouraging people to steal things under $900. Mm -hmm. 
So you saw the video of the guy in San Francisco, he goes in the store with a bike. Yeah. So he rides a bike into the store with a garbage bag, grabs mm -hmm. stuff off the shelf, fills the garbage bag, and rides the bike out the door, and they literally can do nothing about I it. I saw the same thing happen myself. I was in the CVS on the corner of East Riverside and Pleasant Valley. It was maybe 10 at night. I was picking something up. There's one guy at the cash register, and it's just people from the homeless camp on the median there just coming in with their bikes, just taking stuff, walking right out. It's crazy. And, and I, I look at the guy. He's like, you know, I'm not, I can't do anything. I'm not supposed to do anything. Not supposed to do anything about people stealing. And there's a security guard in the, in the video there. He's just right, standing right. there. Well, they don't even have that here. Yeah. Zuby had a really good post this morning, like a 20-parter, like about all the things that um, really social media is a big part of, but how uh, people will often choose, obviously, security over some, over some liberty, um, how they would rather be, um, they'd rather have a little bit of, um, they'd rather not take a chance and be accepted by the group. I mean, these are all very human behaviors, and even without social media's direct intervention, uh, the internet has, has really created a, a beautiful place for propagandists to go to work. Mm. I mean, it's really, really sophisticated, some of this stuff. And, and we don't even know, you don't catch most of it, but so much is being propagandized by corporations mainly, uh, but also, you know, just look at the, the reporting. If we can just touch the third rail, January 6th, you know, this is being th th rammed down our throats as an insurrection, the most dangerous thing that's ever happened since the Civil War. That's our president who said that. Um, but I mean, I have eyes. I saw some of it. You know, we, we haven't seen the 10,000 hours of video that's available. But to say that that was a violent insurrection on par with the Civil War or the worst since 9-11 and we need a 9-11 type commission. I mean, I'm not yeah. blind. I watched it live. I saw a lot of what was going on. It just doesn't seem like there's a truth there between what most would say is, well, we're just walking in between the lines. No, more happened than that. Um, but a violent and it killed five people. No, Th you know, three people died of natural causes. They were protesters, right? Didn't, yeah, didn't the, some yeah, of the protesters yeah. died? They had heart attacks? Because mm -hmm. it's probably the most exciting moment of their life. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. happens. You get a big group of people together, you know, someone's gonna, gonna bite the bullet. Um, you know, the incessant lying about the one Capitol Hill police officer that he was killed, but he died of a uh, um, of a stroke later that night. You know, he wasn't so killed by a fire extinguisher. To yeah, the they head. said he, they beat him to death. Yeah, right? that just That's wasn't true. But that just keeps being repeated and just becomes lore, becomes so the truth. So after he, a while. but he likely died because of the stress caused by that. Event. Well, that has, that isn't likely. being reported like right. that. So you know, yeah, that <laughs> the report was he got bashed in the head with a fire extinguisher. The thing that bothered me the most that I didn't hear much discussion at all that we've talked about a few times on here is the cops opening up the gates. Like, what the fuck was that? and taking selfies with people, like the MAGA-loving cops. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be a good idea to open the gates and to let the protesters well, through. But again, we've only seen what we've seen, what has right. been presented to us. So we don't, everyone has an agenda. We don't really know wh what, you know, every angle. Like, I'm in the studio, and I saw your studio, and like, I had no idea what it would really look like, because I'm just seeing a, a little piece of it. Right. And now I'm here, I'm like, oh, okay, here's the reality of what it really looks like. Mm -hmm. very, very different type of situation. Um, but we're gotten to this place where, and I'm a conspiracy therapist, right? So, <laughs> so, I, so I, I look at all different sides. So there's, there's one angle that, that must be discussed, and I think we're the guys to talk about it, if you is the, is the right place. Um, this could have been something similar to uh, the Reichstag fire in uh, Weimar, Germany, okay. which kicked off kind of the whole uh, uh, Nazi Socialist Party by burning down the government building. They blamed it on these other groups, and you know, then all of a sudden you've got some political power. Um, there's definitely uh, superficial evidence that's, that shows that there may have been people who were instigators, agents provocateurs, who were, um, A, you know, leading the charge, and that there may have been some um, cooperation on the other side, just to get people in, just to get this whole thing going, just to really create this this idea that, uh, if you take, take it 
to its logical conclusion that 70 percent, uh, 70 million Americans are potentially domestic violent extremists can be flipped in a, in a heartbeat. You've got to keep your eye on them. And they're typically white and they're typically Republicans. You know, th that's, that's what this has been turned where, into. Where is the evidence that shows that there was agent provocateurs or that there was some sort of manipulation? Well, the FBI says that they did have con uh, confidential informants uh, at, the, uh, at the event. Mm. They've admitted that. Don't they have they've confidential been, informants everywhere? Well, I think they, Jamie's a confidential informant. <laughs> well, Jamie, Jamie's it. your CIA yeah. handler. We all know that. <laughs> Come on. Give me a break. What's He's happening, next, what's happening next month, uh, Jamie? What are we doing next month for the wait, company? Wait, wait. Pickle Factory okay. hasn't set the hasn't set the information yet. Well, we know that agent provocateurs are a real thing, and we know that they exist throughout history. It would be logical to assume that they're in action today, mm -hmm. and that they are manipulating at events. One thing to consider is, I think that the Capitol Hill, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I'm right, that was the, that was what led them to remove Trump from Twitter, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's important. Like, you need a thing to happen to remove Trump from Twitter because Trump on Twitter, he can do a lot of things. Well, I, I think, I don't know if that was the main reason, but that was a part of it. There's a lot yeah. politically, and everything's politics as far as I'm concerned. It, politically, it was very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, because this has just been positioned and reinforced as a violent insurrection. It right. Would, and, um, the video evidence just shows otherwise. Yeah, there's some people ramming at gates, and but all the stuff that we've heard about, all the scary stuff, there's really no evidence of it. It may be on the videotape, but we haven't seen it. Right, but they did go into an area where they're told not to go into. They yeah. went en masse. There's a storm of people that went in there. It could have turned violent. One lady was shot by a police officer. There was this threat that they were taking over the Capitol building. That is an insurrection, right? Wouldn't you, it, so how do you label my, that? My, uh, we just moved, but my, my, uh, my former neighbor, uh, his wife, uh, is an uh, undercover detective, uh, Austin Police, uh, and also worked Capitol Hill Police for many, many years. And so I had an opportunity to say, you know, after, the, after January 6th, what the hell? And it was made very clear to me if there was a, if, if they, they've shot people throughout, throughout history. Go look how many people were shot and killed by Capitol Hill police um, in the Capitol building from just doing crazy shit. Right. You know, uh, it's been bombed before, literal bombs in the Capitol. So this has happened. Um, these guys don't mess around. If you are doing something that is really dangerous, they shoot to kill right away. No questions asked. They are badass. So that didn't happen. And, of course... My neighbor didn't say, well, that was that was a false flag. And I'm not saying that, but it's kind of odd that, well, obviously it wasn't bad enough for them to shoot on sight or they had orders not to do that because that is what they do. Is that really the only conclusion, though? Because there were so many people and so few security guards. Once they got past the cops on the outside, you mean Capitol Hill police is not the same as security guards. Well, who was the guy? There was a video of um, this one guy telling people to stay back and that they're running up the stairs. And he is trying to get away from them. You've seen know. that, no. but so there, there was, I don't know how many people, but a swarm of people and one security guard with one gun. You know, what does he have? Twenty rounds if he's lucky. And how many? What's his magazine hold? I mean, he's he's really fucked. He's not going to shoot those guys off. And if he does shoot them, he has no idea if they're armed. He doesn't know what's going on. I don't know if they had enough police officers to stop these people from doing what they're doing. Well, that is also very uh, questionable. Why? Right. Why? If you, you know something's coming, they had informants, they knew that people were coming, so you're just not going to staff it up. I mean, there's questions about that. Bottom they didn't line, it, think it was dangerous. But it, right? doesn't, it doesn't matter. The, it's, the story has been written. It will be completely reinforced. These people, this group of people, tried to overthrow our democracy. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. They tried to destroy our democracy. Our democracy has never been in so much peril before. First of all, we're a republic. But, you know, it's like, um, no, that's just not true. I, ranked choice voting is probably more detrimental to a democracy than what happened on January 6th. You follow New York, where they've changed the way you vote? How so? So instead of vote so for mayoral candidate, instead of just voting, I want this guy or this gal to be uh, mm -hmm. the mayor, you do number one pick, number two, number three, number four, number five, you go down the line. And what? the last person's votes get removed, and they get redistributed amongst the rest, but not number one, I think. 
So it what? Yes, they still haven't figured out exactly who's who who the winner is. Wait a minute. Ranked so choice voting. That Jamie? is so <laughs> crazy. They, so you this don't is what just they want. vote for one person. You vote for it's ranked. So, so you, you have choice number one, mm -hmm. and well, if Eric Adams can't make it, I would like Andrew Yang. If Andrew Yang can't make it, I yep. want this guy. That's how it works. Yes. In fact, I think that if we had ranked choice voting for the general election, which is, I believe is what the Democrats would like it to be, that's part of what House Bill One is. Or HR1 um, is is to have ranked choice voting for the general election. At, if that had happened in, in a previous election, we would have uh, Elizabeth Warren as our president, probably. You get mediocre people, I think, with that system. Wow. It's not really a one person, one vote. It's one person, five votes. So here it is. New York City voters will be using the new ranked choice voting system for the June pass uh, party primary elections for mayor. Uh, comptroller, a public advocate, borough president, and city council. Yeah. Voters will be able to rank up to five candidates in order of preference, and ranked choice voting eliminates the runoff elections that used to occur in some states yeah. for citywide offices. So they kind of do a, a, a runoff built into the election. So if, if there's no one with more than 50%, which is very, very common in, in, uh, in, in your typical election, um, then they then they start to move it around and, and move the votes from the from the, the loser to the to the second third and fourth fourth choice, and also you can game it that way. So if you if you absolutely hate Eric Adams, then you're going to put um, your favorites in a different position, knowing that um, when the loser loses their votes, your person will move up maybe from three to two. And it's, 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 it's mathematics that I don't completely understand, but I know that they have, don't have results. It's still a problem. They still don't have the results? I don't think so, no. Well, so why did they switch to this? Control. Oh, my God. So nobody voted for this? This is obviously not, no one said, hey, what a great idea. The election committee, the same people who, who messed up the previous runoff with the, was it the senatorial uh, race? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one person, five votes. I don't know, something this like is that. not comfortable. No, it's not. This is not good. I don't like seeing that. But we're the best country in the world to go through this. We really are. Look at what we get to do right now. We get to criticize it, talk about it. That's true. You know, we got to look at it. And go on. In, we still can. Yeah. Um, and other countries just can't do that. You'll be shut down. And look at the platforms. Man, yeah. there's a lot of people that... I don't think that the mainstream media, the mainstream media, even Twitter is really for politicians. It's, it's for their, their input. They, they're just taking that in and regurgitating it. Meanwhile, Joe Rogan, uh, uh, Tim Poole, um, you know, uh, Brett Weinstein, uh, the No Agenda Show, uh, you just keep going on and on and on and on. These are millions and millions and millions of people who are too tuned out from a whole message and they're tuning into other things maybe thinking for themselves, of course being influenced, but at least there's diversity. It's not just the, you know, the news that is telling us the way it is, so that we only get the one side of Catherine the Great and not the other. Well, this is why it's so dangerous when someone like YouTube or Twitter or someone just so decides to do site-wide censorship on a particular issue. Yeah, but we're the idiots. Like, but we're not. We in, are. In, in some ways. Like, like, here's a good example. The, la the lab leak theory. If you yeah. had the lab leak theory on Facebook a year ago, you get banned. You your posts get deleted. Mm -hmm. You cannot you cannot have that theory because that theory is not in line with either the CDC or the WHO. Now it's the primary theory. Mm -hmm. Now most scientists who looked at the evidence objectively since Trump is no longer in office mm -hmm. and it's been now seven months. Everybody's, their heart rate has dropped down enough and their anxiety has reached levels where they can actually look at <laughs> the science. Mm -hmm. And, you know, John Stewart's rant did wonders for that. That rant was fantastic. I personally believe that something happened. Something happened. And all of a sudden, we had this mask mandate removed within a second, like next day. And people were caught off guard. Schools were freaking out. What are we, we we're not ready. You didn't prepare us. And the CDC has been very good at prepping everybody all the institutions they get the free news we're going to do this it's coming out you hear a thing oh tomorrow cdc's making announcement none of that it just happened it switched i'm still not sure exactly why but that went away overnight and then all of a sudden we got all these other things um we have uh ivermectin and uh, hydroxychloroquine stories bubbling up um but you know this example the the bat versus the lab that just all of a sudden based upon 
a story written by a former New York... T- well, actually, it was a little worse than that. The story was, turns out three people tested or were sick who were working in the lab. And that's why now the lab theory is in play. That, of course, is bullshit. Because if, if we had a story that, oh, three people got sick in the lab, that means it must come from the lab, everyone would criticize it and say, no way, that's not possible, your conspiracy theorist is full of shit. But they're like former New York Times, um, or, or a New York Times uh, columnist who's in his, I think, his 70s now. He went through the whole thing and said, look, here's the absolute proof that, that we have to at least look at this. It makes, there's more evidence here than there is for the, for the bat or the pangolin. And maybe there's a book or some s- stuff is coming out and things and opinions are changing. And I, I think it's related to the, to the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, all I see is marketing. I just see fucking marketing everywhere. So when this changed, and I know John Stewart, I know him back from uh, before the Comedy Central, the MTV Beach House. Um, I think he was sent in to soften the blow. I, I really critically look at what he and Colbert did together, and they have worked together a lot, and Colbert is a great actor. I really think that Colbert was not surprised. He knew that it was coming, and John Stewart had, had a message. And he delivered it, and it softened the blow. So you think that Jon Stewart is involved in a conspiracy to release the information in a funny way so that people accept it more? Well, I, I wouldn't call it a conspiracy. I, I, well, I, someone conspired. They, they Jon Stewart is very involved in, in, in politics. You know, he's, 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 he's very also much a stand-up in, comic, though. Well, okay, so maybe it was a joke. I, it's 100% was a routine, and he's been doing stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's back on the road. Well, I don't know if he's on the road, but he definitely performed with Dave. He was with Chappelle at uh, one of Dave's... Um, Yellow Springs, but, Ohio show. But did he promote that when he came on the Colbert show? Well, this is post that. What what, he, what did he what come I'm, on the Colbert show for? I don't know what he's promoting. <laughs> but, uh, Nothing. Are you sure? I don't think he I don't I think no, he was I don't just there to, to talk about this. I don't know that. Well we, we could find that out. Mm-hmm. But the point is he had been doing stand up and if he was gonna do it was gonna burn some material. Mm-hmm. You know, that that would be a good piece of material to burn Ooh. because it's you know it's n- not going to be relevant very much longer. It was it's a very thing. funny. It was very re- funny. Very, yeah, but very Colbert, funny. this is where I disagree with you. Colbert clearly was trying to hamstring that. He was trying to stop that routine. Well, if there's any evidence, I'd like to hear it. He was fucking up a comedic bit. See, Colbert is a, a brilliant comedic actor, as Stephen Colbert on Comedy Central and The Daily Show. Mm-hmm. Like I loved him as that character, mm-hmm. but I d- I do not particularly like how he handled that mm-hmm. with Jon Stewart because he was getting in the way of a bit which is something oh, a comic interesting, interesting. never I, does I, see, I didn't pick up on that as I, a comic yeah, yeah, Colbert course. is not a comic yeah. in that he does he does a monologue routine you know but he's not hitting the road doing stand up talking shit and but I think he's he's an actor not just a comedic actor he's yes. a really good actor He's, he's done a lot. He does creepy stuff. He's done some really good I've never good seen roles. any of his stuff other than yeah. that character. And I think that character is brilliant, especially w- the way he used to do it before he took over as a talk show yeah. host. Yeah. Now he's like a different guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now he's like yeah. a very social justice warrior y. You know, but we, can, we can agree on one thing that that, that, that um, interaction between Jon Stewart and uh, Stephen Colbert softened. The entire news, the the delivery of it. Oh, okay. Oh, well, shit. You know, these guys say it's okay. Whether that was intentional set up or not, I think it made a big difference. People. Oh, I can accept this now. I think it's just John Stewart pointing out the obvious in a very funny way. He's like, "Are you out of your fucking mind? This is a lab in Wuhan that measures coronaviruses, that does work with them, that mm-hmm. actually juices them up, to gain a function research. But they're there in the place where it broke out, and everyone's saying, well, no, it's, it probably came from a pangolin. So he goes on this long comedic rant mm-hmm. about how, of course, this is probably what happened. Mm-hmm. Like, the idea of this l- l- natural spillover is stupid. So he's just doing stand-up. Mm. Okay. That's my take on it. I mean, I, I, this, this is what we talked about just a couple minutes ago. Yeah. I see something, you see the same thing. This is my take, that's your take. I'm totally willing to believe yours, yeah, I too, do. obviously. Because the end result is the same. I cannot imagine a world where Jon Stewart agrees with St- Stephen Colbert and Jon Stewart get together and go, uh, and, and Stewart goes, look, I wrote this incredible bit because I was contacted by the powers that be, and they want to soften the blow of the live mm-hmm. leak thing, so they want me to do a comedic bit. 
So I've created this comedic bit. Like, the the problem with that theory is it's Occam's razor, right? What's the most obvious scenario? The most obvious scenario is, look, this is comedy just writing itself. 